Okay, let's take a look at uh, surface areas of revolution. Now, before we get started on this, you'll find that surface area is very closely tied to the arc length. So if you haven't done it yet, definitely go back and watch the arc length video before you watch this, because when we derive the formula for this one, it'll come from that arc length video. So watch that one first. Now, what a surface area is all about is this. Suppose you had some function, you've got an f of x, and just like everything else, we'll go ahead and roll this thing around the axis, and when you roll it around the axis, it will do the following. It will sweep out something that looks like this. Now in the past we found the volume of this thing, uh, we found other things. Uh, what we want to find in this case is this. Suppose you had to paint the outside surface of this. So you were going to paint this light blue area right in here. Now the question is, what is that surface area? So what is this light blue surface area? And the problem, of course, is just like everything else, you don't have a formula for any just general function. So what you have to do is to substitute that light blue surface area for something that you do have a formula for. Now in this case, what we'll do is divide this thing up into a series of little, what are called, frustums. Let's take a look at what a frustum is. So what a frustum is, it will look like this. It's a section of a right circular cone. And it looks like this. Now there is a formula, you can get a formula from geometry for the surface area of a frustum. So let's take a look at that. So we wanted the surface area of a frustum. Now before we do that, uh, this little red thing here is defined to be, and again the name is actually a frustum. So that's what we're going to call this thing. So it's called a frustum. Now, let's go ahead and remove the blue part of it so we can actually just concentrate on the frustum itself. So what it's going to look like is this. Now, a couple of things you're going to need. Uh, this is a straight line from here to here, and we're going to call that straight line L. So this is what's called the slant height, and we will call it L. So that is the slant height. So you're going to need to know L. You're also going to need to know what the average radius of the frustum is. Now the idea is you've got a small radius here, you've got a larger radius here. If you come halfway in between the two and find the average radius, it would go from here down to here. And this length from here to here would be the average radius. So you've got the average radius. So the average radius. Now, if you look at a geometry book, you'll find a formula for the surface area of a frustum, and what it is, it would be equal to 2 pi times the average radius and then that times the slant height. So the slant height. Now you can get that formula from a geometry book. So what we need to do now is to change these things into uh, things on our figure here. So what I want to find is the surface area. So the surface area, now what you've got is here's the 2 pi. So I've got 2 pi. <clears throat> now the average radius, if you look at it, that's just the height of the curve. So the average radius is nothing more than f of x. It's whatever the function value is at that time, because that length right there is f of x. So what this would be would be f of x. So the average radius is going to be the value of the function at that point. Now the slant height is what we're calling l. So this is going to be l. But what we'll do on this one, it's going to be the length of that straight line. Now that's what we did in the last video. In the last video on arc length, we derived a formula for the length of L, and I won't do it again here, so watch the other video if you want to see it. But L will turn out to be, just from the last video from the arc length section, it will be the square root of 1 plus the derivative of f of x squared dx. So this part right here is nothing more than L from the last video, from the arc length video. So that's going to be L. Okay, now what this is, this would be um, 
the surface area of a single frustum, this red shaded area right here. But what we want is the entire thing. So let's go ahead and put the full cone back on there. We want the entire thing. So what you'll have would be several frustums in here, and just like you've done with everything else, add them all up, take the summation, and let the number of frustums go to infinity, and you will have the exact surface area of this. So again, if you take the summation of a series of individual frustums, then the formula will turn into this. You'll have the surface area. It would be equal to, now what you'll do is you're going to go from A here to B here. So you're actually going to integrate it uh, across this. So uh, you'll integrate it from A to B going this way. So it will look like this. The integral from A to B of 2 pi times then this is the average radius which is f of x and then the slant height which is the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared and then the whole thing dx. So what this will give you, this is the formula for finding the surface area of a function of revolution. So now, with that formula in mind, let's take a look at an example and see what this thing looks like. So we'll work through one problem completely. Okay, suppose we had this. We've got the function is f of x is equal to 2x cubed, and we would like to find what would be the surface area if you rolled this thing around the x-axis uh, on the integral from 0 to 1. So first of all, start with the formula. So the formula <clears throat> looks like this. So this is when we got finished with. Now what this is, uh, this would be A right here. So you're going to have A here and B right here. So from A to B. Now two things you're going to need in here. You're going to need the original function and you're going to need the derivative. So my suggestion is in the very first step, you might as well just go ahead and find the derivative. So step one, uh, you're going to need F prime of X. So step one, go ahead and find it. Just go ahead and find f prime of x. So in this case, it's going to be pretty easy to do. Just take the derivative. Uh, f prime of x would be equal to the derivative of this, which would just be 6x squared. So you've got f prime. Okay, now just on step two, go ahead and uh, put that in the formula. So we'll go to step two which is just to evaluate the formula. So evaluate it. Now when you plug it in, you'll have this. The surface area would be equal to the integral from, and again we're going to go from 0 to 1, so this will be from 0 to 1 of 2 pi, and again I'll use brackets, uh, and Plug in the original function, which is 2x cubed. So I'll have 2x cubed here. Then you've got the square root of, and this will be 1 plus, <clears throat> and in place of this, put the derivative, which would be 6x squared. So you're going to have 6x squared right here. And the whole thing will be squared, <clears throat> then you've got a dx. So now it's just a matter of solving this uh, integral. So we'll go ahead and take off on that. That means that the surface area, now a couple things you can do. You've got a 2 and a 2, so that's 4. Then you've got a pi, you can bring the constant out front. So the very first thing I'll do is bring the constant out in front. 2 times 2 would be 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 1. And I'm going to kind of rewrite things. I'll take this and put it in, in uh, fractional form, so I'll change it to 1 plus uh, 6x squared to the 1 half power, and I'm going to take this x cubed right here, so this x cubed here, and I'm going to move it over to this right side, so getting ready for u substitution, so I'll move the x cubed over here. So all I've done there is just really change things around. I change the square root into fractional form. And the next thing I do is go ahead and square what's on the inside here. <clears throat> uh, 
Oops, I'll have to square it out. This one should have a squared right here. So x squared. Uh, okay, now I want to square the 6 and square this. <clears throat> so that's going to get me to the surface area would be equal to 4 pi times the integral from <clears throat> 0 to 1 of, and this would be 1 plus 36x to the 4th, the whole thing to the 1 half power, then I've got an x cubed dx. Now at this point, <clears throat> this thing really turns into a u-substitution problem because you've got a composite function here, so we'll use u-substitution to solve it. So what I'll do is let on this inside part, I'll let this be my value of u, and I will attempt to get rid of this part right here. So I'm going to try to get rid of the x cubed dx. Okay, so let's do that off the side over here. Uh, we'll do our u-substitution over here. This, so here will be the u-sub. So on u-substitution. Uh, so I'll let u be equal to 1 plus 36x to the 4th. Now take the derivative of that. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to... Now this is going to be a constant. Uh, this uh, derivative of constant will be 0, so this will be 144x cubed. So that means that the differential of u would be equal to 144x cubed times the differential of x. Again, look back over here. I need an x cubed dx, but I've got a 144x cubed dx. So I've got to take the 144 from this side and move it over to this side. So that's going to give me 1 over 144 du would be equal to x cubed dx. Now at this point, I needed an x cubed dx and I've got an x cubed dx. So I'll substitute this part right here, 144, or 1 over 144 du. So I'll put a little red box around that. That's my u substitution right there. So there's the u substitution for this problem. Okay, now when you make the substitution, this is what you'll come up with then. You've got the surface area is equal to 4 pi times the integral from u to the 1 half and replace the x cubed uh, dx with 1 over 144. So it'll be 1 over 144 du. Now again, in any use substitution problem, I'm going to go ahead and change the limits. So what this is, just a reminder, uh, this was in terms of x, so this went from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So I'm going to change it to a u problem, so from u equals something to u equals something. So I'll change my u limits. So let's go ahead and change the limits. So on your limits down here, you'll have the following. So when x is equal to 1, then u is equal to, and plug a 1 into what u is equal to. So that will be 1 plus 36 times 1 to the 4th, which would be 37. So when x is equal to 1, u is equal to 37. Now find the lower limit. So when x is equal to 0, then u is equal to 1 plus 36 times 0 to the fourth power, which would be equal to 1. So the lower limit here would be 1. So this takes care of your limits. So you also had to change the limits. I'm going to put a little box around that one. Okay, so you had to do use substitution and change the limits. Now at this point, it's just a matter of evaluating that integral. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, first of all, you can bring the 144 out in front, so you'll have the surface area, 
would be equal to, and this will be 4 goes into 1 uh, 36 times, so that's going to leave you pi divided by 36 times the integral from 1 to 37 of u to the 1 half du. So that would be um, pi divided by 36, and the antiderivative of this will get you to u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves uh, evaluated between 1 and 37. So that gets you to surface area would be uh, pi divided by 36, and you can take the 2 thirds, turn it upside down, and bring it to the outside. So this would be 2 thirds of and evaluate, uh, plug in the 37, so this will be 37 to the 3 halves power minus 1 to the 3 halves power. And finally, that gets you to this. So the surface area would be equal to, now this will give you uh, 2 goes into 36, 18 times 3 would be 54. You get pi divided by 54 times and this will be 37 to the 3 halves power minus 1. And what that is, that's going to be the exact answer to this question. So the surface area would be this right here. Uh, and again, this is if you wanted the exact answer. Now, if you were just looking for a decimal answer, you could take that thing put it on your calculator and it will turn out to be 13.03. Now this would be square, whatever, square inches, whatever your, the units were in the problem. So this would be the approximate answer. So, and again, if it was in inches, it might turn out to be square inches, depending on what the thing is. So you can either have an exact answer or an approximate answer. So again, just to go back up and look at the problem one more time. Uh, Starting with the original function, uh, basically you need the derivative, so go ahead and step one, find the derivative. Uh, then plug both the original function, and you plug the original function in here, you plug the derivative in here. And at that point, it really just becomes a matter of evaluating the integral, which turns into a u substitution problem. So do your u substitution, change the limits. Uh, run through all the math, and when you get finished, you'll come up with this. And you can either have an exact answer or this. So that's an example of a surface area of revolution problem. And again, you might want to look back at the arc length problem uh, because the two are very closely related.